To create a sequence of emails, or workflows as we call it in MailerLite, click Create a new workflow. Add a memorable name. Select a group of subscribers. You can also create a new group or exclude any other group from this workflow by using these links here. And choose the trigger of this workflow. Will it start when a subscriber joins your chosen group? Or when he joins a segment or exits one? To do this, you must have created at least one segment based on a custom field. You can also trigger the workflow based on the exact match of a date or an anniversary date like a birthday. For this to work, you will need to create a custom date field in your subscriber group. And if you don't already have one, you can create one here. In this case, I'm going to use the most popular trigger when a subscriber joins a group. For this example, I'll also click here. This basically means that the same subscriber will get this whole workflow again if he rejoins the group in the future. After that, click Save and start building your workflow. Clicking the plus icon will allow you to add four different types of steps. The first step allows you to create an email. Add a subject. You can change your From details here. Use Google UTM tags if your site supports them. Choose the language. And of course, design the email. Here you can use our simple drag and drop editor, the rich text editor, or your own HTML code. You can also use any recent email from Sent, Drafts, or even other automations. But I'm going to go with a template this time. Select, make any changes you need, and click Done Editing. And that's the first email a subscriber will automatically receive when joining this group. But what if I want him to get it two days after joining the group? Well, that's what delays are for. The second option when adding a next step. So click Delay, add the number of days, and click Save. Instead of days, you can also wait for a chosen amount of minutes, hours, weeks, and months. You can also choose a specific time or date. But I'll cancel this and stick with two days. The next type of step you can create is a condition, which will split the subscribers in your group based on the settings you choose here. It can be based on the activity of a campaign you've already sent using the normal campaign feature. You choose the email on which you'll base your condition here. And then choose the condition itself. You can split the group based on whether a subscriber opened or didn't open the chosen email, whether he clicked any link or a specific link, whether he opened the email but didn't click any link, or whether he opened the email but didn't click a specific link. Instead of a campaign activity, you can also choose a different condition, like the segment of a subscriber. If you don't have a segment but need one, you can create it here. You can also base the condition on a specific custom field, like an email address, country, or city, and then select the condition. But instead of this, I'm going to go with the most popular choice, based on workflow activity, which is all about the emails that come before this condition in this specific workflow. This time, we only have one. I'll choose the email I just created, and the condition was opened. In this case, people who open this email will go into this branch, and people who don't will go into the other one. And remember to click Save. OK, so now when a person joins this group, the workflow will be triggered. And after two days, they'll get this email. And at the same time, this condition will check if the Welcome to the Adventure email was opened or not. Do you see a problem with this? Well. We are not giving the subscribers enough time to actually open the email. And that was what this notice was all about. So we need to give the subscribers some time. Let's give them two days. And if they don't open it, for the sake of this example, let's send it again. Click Email, Design Email. Oops, we need a subject. Design the email, Recent, Automations. Select, Done Editing. And if they do open the adventure email, let's add an action. You can choose to 
update a subscriber's custom field, copy him to another group, or create a new one here. Move them to another group, or mark them as unsubscribed. I'll choose to copy to another group, a new group called Engaged. Now we can turn on the workflow. But before I can do this, I need to complete all the steps here. Let me see what I missed. Oh, I didn't save the delay. Just click the step that needs to be completed or find the step here. Save it and complete any other unfinished steps and then you can turn the workflow on. While the workflow is on, you can click any step, edit it and view the report of a specific email. But to add or delete steps, you will first need to turn the workflow off. You can now delete, copy or create new steps. When deleting a condition, you can delete everything below it or choose the branch that will be kept. I'll delete the yes branch and keep the email in the no branch. And duplicate this email to show you something. Deleting emails, delays or actions will not delete any of the steps below them. But remember, if you're editing a workflow and you delete a delay step that already has subscribers in it, things can get complicated. When you're done with the edits, you can turn on the workflow again. You'll need to choose what to do with any subscribers that joined the workflow group during your edits. I want them added to the workflow. To view all your workflows, just press the Back to Automation button. From this view, you can organize your workflows into folders, filter and sort them, hover to see the amount of emails in a workflow, view the report, edit the workflow or delete it all together. And there you go. Hope you've enjoyed this overview and I'll see you in the next video.